Pon Tu. Good morning and good evening, everyone. I'm Ting Yen. I'm happy to see all of you for joining us today in this Dhamma Pada study second session. This class offers us a wonderful opportunity to deepen our understanding and connect with teachings that can help us grow both spiritually and personally. We are very fortunate to have Bante Pema Ratana here again, and I'm sure his insight will inspire and guide us all. Without further ado, please join me in warmly welcoming Bante Pema Ratana. Thank you, sister, and very good evening and uh, blessings of the Triple Gem to all of you. So nice to, you know, have you all again uh, for the second session of our Dhammapati studies. So before we start our Dhammapati studies, let us take a moment to pay our respect and pay our gratitude to our Supreme Buddha. Let us put our palms together, recite Namaskari three times. Namu tasse bhagavatu arahatu sangma sangbuddhasse Namu tasse bhagavatu arahatu sangma sangbuddhasse Namu tasse bhagavatu arahatu Sangma Sangbuddhase. Okay. So today is our second uh, verse that we are going to study. There's uh, six verses that I have selected for you. Uh, as we discussed last time, uh, we know that uh, Dhammapada is a collection of gathas. Uh, in other words, actually, uh, poetic utterances in Pali language um, given by the Buddha. So most of the time those utterances are actually sometimes summaries of what Buddha has you know, said in, um, in sermons, in, in discourses. So therefore these uh, uh, gathas are almost like a you know, very concise way of presenting the teachings of the Buddha. It is like, like a pithy instructions. So today we have a very, uh, a very beautiful gatha. Uh, I'm going to show you that first, and then uh, uh, from there we will uh, uh, discuss. So, uh, sister, you know, I may need uh, uh, permission to share the screen. Uh, so I think uh, you should have received the uh, list of gathas that we are studying. Uh, so you can turn to, you know, uh, yeah, I think I can share. It's in the second gatha that we are going to study. Thank you, sister. I now I can share. Okay, so this is the gatha that we are going to study today. <clears throat> so it may sound very strange to you because this is in Pali language, um, but I'm going to chant that for you, uh, and then later we can uh, go through the meaning. <clears throat> uh, okay, let me. Uh, Chant that for you uh, in Pali. Nidhi nangve pavatntarang yang passe vajjadasinang nigai havading medhaving Tadi sang panditang bhaje. Tadi sang bhaje ma nasense. Seyo hoti nepapio. This is verse number 76 in the Dhammapada on the chapter on vice. So rough meaning is given here. When should one find a person who points out faults who and who reproves, one should follow such a wise and sagacious person as one would follow a guide to some hidden treasure. To one who follows such a wise person, it will be an advantage not a disadvantage. So what Buddha is saying here is actually, 
if you have a wise person as a teacher, as a friend, uh, as a guide in your life, and, and that person is pointing out your faults <laughs> and reproves <laughs> you uh, of your weaknesses, of your misbehavior, and you you uh, receive this uh, uh, um, this pointing out of your faults, and then uh, maybe some admonitions uh, from that person. Usually, we find that such such persons maybe um, you know um, difficult to be with, uh, or we may uh, not enjoy the company of of someone who is all, who is who will always point out our faults or reproves us of our misbehavior. But what the Buddha is saying here is actually, if you have such a teacher or a good friend, you should actually follow such a wise and sagacious person. Uh, just like, you know, when, when, you, when someone points out a fault in us, when someone, you know, uh, reproves us from some misbehavior, treat that moment almost like a showing us a hidden treasure. For such a person who will always take, you know, others, you know, uh, maybe advices or maybe even pointing out our weaknesses, if we take such pointing out such admonitions as, as, as valuable, and for such a person, there will always be an advantage or progress, and that will not be a disadvantage. So this is the meaning of the simple meaning of the verse. So it's, it looks like it's, it's going against our normal way of, you know, uh, uh, thinking. Uh, it's like uh, encouraging us to think slightly differently and challenging us uh, to accept, <laughs> accept maybe criticism, uh, not really harsh criticism, unkind criticism, but you know, accept some uh, constructive criticism, accept. Um, uh, others' advice, although it is hurtful, um, advices uh, as as valuable guidance to us. So why here? Um, uh, I really like to see why would they say that uh, someone pointing us our weakness is similar to pointing out a treasure in us, uh, like a hidden treasure. Okay, so. Uh, before that, uh, let me um, go to you know a few important Pali words that I would like you to just family with. You know, maybe if you are interested in learning Pali, or uh, maybe I would like to every day you know, teach you a few Pali terms. Uh, so if the few important Pali terms are used in this verse, uh, one is called nidhi. Nidhi is the term for treasure. Anything that's like a hidden, important, valuable, precious things. Nidhi. Nidhi is a treasure. And then Vajja. Vajja is for fault. Uh, so here we talk about you know, pointing out faults. So Vajja is fault. Vajja. That is how you pronounce it. Vajja. And the third one is Medhavi. Medhavi. Sagacious person. The term medha or medha is used for wisdom. Medha. And medhavi is one who has wisdom. So medhavi is the term for sagacious person. Medhavi. If someone would like to have a Buddhist name, <laughs> this will be a nice Buddhist name, medhavi. If someone is interested in having a Buddhist name, medhavi. Maybe a little bit uh, more like a female name, or Medhavi. Uh, and then um, the next one is Pandita. Pandita. Uh, Pandita is the is a Pali term for knowledgeable person. You may this this is a term that you may uh, have already been familiar with. Uh, like we you, we have an English term called Pandit. You know, I mean, you may have seen the right Pandit. Uh, so that pandit means, means like ex expert in a certain field. So we, you can have financial pandits. So the term pandit means experts or knowledgeable person. So that's coming from Pali and Sanskrit. So pandita is the original term for knowledgeable person. So what Buddha is asking us to like, you know, follow such a sagacious and uh, knowledgeable person, 
but don't always follow a person that you always appreciate, you always approve you, actually follow a person who will always, you know, uh, pointing out your weaknesses. Okay, let's go to the, uh, go to understand quite, you know, deeper meaning of this verse. Why would they say that it is almost like a showing a hidden treasure when someone points out our fault? Uh, it is not easy to find out our own weaknesses, you know, because most of the time we are, our attention are not towards ourselves. We always have attention is outward. So we don't really see our behavior. We don't really see our facial expressions. We don't really see our own, uh, um, uh, our own um, conduct. So only others can see it. And, um, and mainly we have a kind of resistance to accept our own uh, faults. It is easy for us to discern and, and uh, discern others' faults, but it's very, very difficult uh, to, to recognize our own. Uh, and so there's another important Dhammapada verse. I will quickly read that. You know, this is Dhammapada verse in the, uh, 252. Their Buddha said, uh, it is easy to see faults of others, but difficult to see one's own faults. One shows the faults of others like a chaff, winnowed in the wind, but on, on conceals one's own as a cunning gambler conceals his dice. So Buddha is giving two examples here. Like it's very easy for us to see the faults of others, but it's very difficult to see one's own. That is why we need someone to help us to recognize our weaknesses, because it's not something we can see by ourselves. Very difficult. Yeah, and uh, so two similes are given here that when the others' faults are like obvious out outside, like a chaff, we know it in the wind, it's always out. We can easily see others, but when it comes to ourselves, it is hidden, <laughs> like you know, uh, like a cunning gambler conceals his dice. Uh, we try to sometimes hide our weaknesses, and of course, um, uh, but it's, sometimes we, it's, it is hidden for our own eyes too. It is because we cannot see our own faults that easily we need someone to help us to understand our weaknesses, understand how I can grow. So usually whenever... Um, and even, even so, even when someone points out our weaknesses and you know, and you know, some mistakes, we have a tendency to reject or to ignore or to justify our behavior. We have all reasons why I did like that, why I have, why I have spoken like that. We can give all the reasons and justify our behavior, uh, and and that is that is what we are doing in our normal life. One, it is very difficult for us for us to identify our own mistakes and our own um, faults. Very difficult, even when someone points out our mistakes or behavior, um, mis misbehavior or weaknesses, we will not easily accept them. We will justify our behavior. We will reject, and sometimes even we ignore. We don't care. That is how usually we live our life normally. What Buddha is advising us to do here is understand and be mindful and how this you know, um, attitude actually is someone is pointing out a mistake, treat it as almost like a hidden treasure because it's very difficult for us to see our own weaknesses. We all want to grow. We all want to you know, uh, grow and, and become the best version of ourselves. You know, of course, in, in Buddhist understanding, we all want to become Arya Pugala. Uh, we call noble person, Arya Pugala. We all want to recognize our own defilements and, and gradually overcome those defilements to become an Arya Pugala. And that's our goal. Uh, we don't want to, you know, be like this all the time. <laughs> you know, and we, we really want to grow beyond this. This is not the optimal way of living. This is not the optimal way of being. There's more room for us to progress. That is what the Buddha had shown us, to show the enlightened personality, that we can gradually grow. But in order to grow, we need to understand our own defilements. What kind of defilements are prominent in me? 
what kind of weakness that I have, which area that I have difficulties with. Is it with interpersonal relationship? Is it handling a stress? Or is it handling a, a grief? You know, we, we, we will all have different patterns uh, of how we mismanage uh, many issues in our life. So maybe we are very good at in, uh, in, in dealing with the stress, but we may not be very good at dealing with the loss of important things. Or we may be good at you know, um, communication with others, but we may not good at uh, um, good at you know um, maybe even like you know taking care of oneself. So we we, we all have different you know patterns, uh, different patterns of defilements. So we really need uh, someone uh, with kindness and and wisdom to help us to point out these things. So therefore, whenever we receive such you know um, such um, uh, maybe criticism or such. Uh, admonishments, you know, we may not be happy, but Buddha is asking us to change our attitude and 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 use them as as treasures. So, uh, I would like to point out two defilements that will prevent us from learning and growing. So, you need to understand that in order to identify our own defilements, we need some support uh, from you know from teachers, from you know good friends, uh, and but. Uh, but you know, and but to uh, but there are two defilements that prevent us from learning and growing. Uh, two defilements that prevent us from growing, uh, learning and growing. And in in this these two defilements will prevent us from learning and growing, and and then we will not, we'll not be able to overcome our defilements. Uh, so therefore, we really need uh, to understand this. And one is uh, conceit, pride. Uh, and that will, you know, uh, that will not help us whenever we receive uh, uh, advice or, uh, you know, instruction from others. You know, it's very difficult for us to, you know, uh, uh, accept and, you know, uh, be humble. Um, and our conceit, our pride will, you know, prevent us from opening our eyes to it, even considering it or even accepting it. We will always try to defend. That's called conceit. We need to recognize these two things. There's also other defilement is called stubbornness or uh, obstinacy or arrogance. And you know, the Pali term is thumbha. Actually, the thumbha is actually like a pillar, a strong pillar that is not flexible at all, like a strong pillar. You know, and sometimes it can be like a strong pillar, not flexible, not listening, not you know, um, willing to change stubbornness like a pillar <laughs> so thumb is like a pillar and also this you know defilements so these are the two defilements that will prevent us from you know giving our ear to instructions guidance and some sometimes criticisms and and these two will prevent us from growing we really need to be very very mindful whenever these things uh, arise in us usually whenever you read a bad comment or bad feedback or you know <clears throat> Um, maybe some kind of you know um, uh, instruction or admonitions. You will feel these these defilements are coming and arising in us, like 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 defending us. You know, not you know giving all kind of reasons you know, for our behavior. So we need to observe that urge arising of defilements and observe them and notice them, but not to become the victims of those defilements and tell ourselves, oh, I see that. Mm -mm, okay, I see that. Conceit is coming. I see that stubborn is coming. I see that in my, you know, uh, that you know, defilements are coming. You observe them and recognize and remember. Oh, these things are not helping me to grow. Uh, so, so those two uh, defilements are like a maladaptive strategies to protect the self, uh, and 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 you know, wrongly we, we try to protect the self. So therefore, we really have uh, to have good uh, understanding of these uh, defilements, and if we have if you have that awareness and mindfulness of these two defilements, then we can actually recognize them and go beyond them and open our ears to the instruction and guidance we receive from others. So I, I, either we need a strong skill of mindfulness to notice our own weaknesses or defilements, definitely we can develop our mindfulness enough that you know we can recognize when a defilement is arising in us, that should be our goal. But until then, uh, we need a kalyanamitta 
a spiritual teacher or a spiritual friend who points out our weaknesses and defilements. So therefore, we should be humble and accept uh, those weaknesses. So acceptance is the beginning of the growth. Okay. Um, and um, so uh, until now, and I, I think uh, we, um, uh, the, the, the meaning, main idea, meaning of the verse is that so I'm going to share with you the story behind this uh, gatha. But before that, I would like to take a moment uh, to answer any questions or you know uh, from you. Uh, is anyone has any query or any questions to ask from the you know key points that I made here? Okay. Uh, you can also ask your question in the, using the chat box. Uh, okay, otherwise, let's move to the other part. Um, of course, you know, we can have some discussion later, you know, um, are all criticisms uh, helpful, you know, and, and, you know, how we can um, manage that. Uh, maybe you, you may have some, you know, thoughts in your mind that, you know, um, let's talk uh, on that more detail later. So this interesting verse is given by the Buddha based uh, uh, based on an interesting story. And there was a uh, the monk at the time of the Buddha. Actually, there was a helper uh, in the in in the Savatthi in the Buddha in the Buddhist monastery, uh, like a helper, a very old person. He will always help the monks prepare things. He clean the monastery. And he came to the monastery uh, in his old age, um, and and but but he uh, he expressed his willingness to become a monk. But many other senior monks didn't want to make him a student because they thought that it's very difficult to train him. He's too old, very difficult to train him, and and the other senior monks did not accept him as a disciple to train him. So this old person went to the Buddha. His name was Radha. He went to the Buddha and, and told the Buddha uh, that you know, I would really like to become a monk. I have been in the monastery for many years now. I really would like to become a monk. But no senior monk is willing to take me as a student, as a disciple. And then on that account, Buddha actually summoned all the monks in the monastery. And there was a, uh, and the, in that gathering, Buddha asked, uh, this person sitting here, uh, have you uh, ever received any help from this person uh, in your life? Of course, he has been helping so many months. But in that crowd, there was venerable Sariputta, uh, the one of the chief two chief disciples of the Buddha. And uh, so when when venerable Sariputta is there, and he uh, venerable Sariputta told the Buddha. Venerable sir, I remember this person helped me a lot. I specifically remember one day he offered me rice. He offered me you know, uh, rice. So I remember his help. Then Buddha asked, if that person has helped you, don't you like to help him in return? He, he has a desire to become a monk. Why don't you make him your disciple? So Venerable Sariputta accepted to make him, uh, uh, to ordain him and train him. So, so Venerable Sariputta took this old uh, gentleman as a disciple and trained him and, and, uh, and ordained him. And, and what happened that everybody thought that this, this older person will not be able to train, uh, get training. But what happened was that actually uh, Venerable Sariputta has to do a lot of admonishments for this uh, old, uh, elder person to like, first of all, to you know, like, behave like a monastic. And, and the Venerable Sariputta is always point out, that is not how you do it. That is not how you, you know, keep things. That is not how you, you know, um, pay res uh, be, be respectful. He always giving all this instruction. But all the monks notice that this uh, older monk is very listening. He is very um, uh, humble and getting all the instruction. And he, will, he never get, got hurt when you know those you know senior monks was giving him instruction, Venerable Sariput is the main teacher, but there are other monks also helping him and always giving instruction, guidance, and pointing out his mistakes. 
Uh, and then, of course, later he became very good in monastic behavior, and then he started to study and learn and practice meditation under the guidance of Venerable Sariputta. So it was a rough period for this, you know, uh, elder monk, you know, go through all these trainings and everyone or the senior monks are giving him a lot of instruction, but he was willing to accept them, very obedient and listening and never got hurt. All the things that point uh, are coming, all the instruction, all the criticism he get, he took them as very valuable thing. So what happened actually after a few months, uh, and this monk was able to become really, really very uh, knowledgeable, advanced and practitioner. And within a short period of time, he was able to achieve very success in his meditation. And of course, eventually, he even became enlightened sage, enlightened monk. And after uh, all the monks witnessed the transformation of this you know, uh, elderly person to an elderly monk, to a very disciplined monk, to, to a very strong, uh, dedicated practitioner, and eventually become an enlightened person. So there was a discussion among the monks about this monk one day. Uh, and then on that occasion, Buddha uttered this stanza saying that that is how, uh, even, even we don't have much training in us, even though we are not uh, well that knowledgeable, uh, but if we have this one quality that you will take all the criticism, you will take all these admonishments as treasure, you can grow. Uh, and that is the important you know, um, quality that you should have. So Buddha, you know, uh, in that uh, instance, your occasion would the utter this verse. And of course, you may remember that Venerable Rahula, the Prince Siddhartha's son, also had the same quality. He was also, you know, accepting and receiving all the instruction. Okay, so that's the story behind this uh, verse. So now I would like to, you know, take a moment uh, to have some discussion uh, about, um, you know, uh, what you think about this, you know, uh, um, how we, if we have a person who is always criticize you, can you take that person as your Kalyanamitra? What do you think? Do you have someone who will always, you know, criticize you, or maybe all always point out, you know, your weaknesses? Can you can you consider him a Kalyanamitra, or about a spiritual teacher, a spiritual friend? Can you think that oh, may all criticisms, criticism are hidden treasures? Or only some criticisms are hidden treasures? What do you think about that? Anyone would like to comment and share? Think about your own friends. <laughs> think about your own teacher. You know, uh, maybe le let me share my, you know, uh, my experience. Of course, we can have a discussion. I mean, because some people may be always critical, always negative, always nagging, always complaining, always, you know, uh, giving, you know, maybe, you know, bad comments, you know. So we re what Buddha, Buddha used here, a very important two term, you know, the two term I taught you in Pali, like uh, sagacious uh, and then knowledgeable, right? So, so uh, the person has to be maybe a little bit knowledgeable and wise. So it's not all the criticism we get from others, but actually maybe a knowledgeable person and also reasonable criticism. You know, let me share, you know, it, there was a very embarrassing experience that I had. <laughs> it happened many, many years ago, so I can actually share with you now. Um, so this happened, you know, when I was a, uh, uh, still a student monk in Sri Lanka. Uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I, I was in the university uh, and then uh, somehow I got an invitation to give a short sermon uh, in the uh, in 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 radio. Uh, so it was a very good opportunity for me. So I went to the uh, uh, national radio and the studio, and they 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 were ready to record me. They actually started recording me. So they gave me. Uh, so I was speaking uh, to uh, on a, on a topic in uh, giving a sermon, so they will record it and later they will broadcast it. So uh, the, for me, that's the first time that I'm, you know, I'm in this radio station, in this studio. So, so they started record my sermon. You know, I, I prepared myself very well, you know, so I, I really want to tell all the things that I have prepared. And what happened was that actually, 
I kept talking and talking and talking very fast. I didn't realize that at all. I just want to you know, express what I have prepared for. I just kept saying, you know what happened? In the middle of the recording, they stopped the recording. <laughs> and then uh, um, uh, the, the, the producer of the program came to me <laughs> and said, Venerable sir, this is not, not, not going to work. You are speaking so fast and, and it's, not, it's not good for you. It is also not good for the audience. No one will be able to you know, follow because you speak so fast. We, we stop your recording and we can record you again, but speak slowly. <laughs> that was a big embarrassment for me at that time. But that was a nice, actually, it was a very good you know, a lesson for me. Even right now, you know, even nowadays, I have a tendency to speak fast. But I remember that all the time. I try to remember it and purposefully, like, you know, slow down myself. And, you know, so, so he stopped the recording in the middle and came and directly told me that this is this is not good. This is not going to work. And it is not good for you. And no one will be able to, you know, understand you. Uh, so that instruction was actually uh, pointing out my weaknesses at that time, was actually showing me <laughs> hidden uh, weakness that I should pay attention to uh, and then in order for me to grow. So it was an interesting memory that I had. So anyone else would like to share such an experience that happened in your life? Do you get uh, like admonishments? You know, you found it very difficult at that time, but, but help you so much later? Actually, you know, today, today is the full moon day. That is the last full moon day within the month of, you know, rainy retreat. And today is the day also the, uh, the, uh, in which monks gathered. And then, you know, we uh, complete our rain retreat. And there's an important uh, monastic uh, uh, activity we do today. Actually, that is to you know, um, invite all the other monks uh, to point out uh, whatever mistake, whatever misbehavior that they have noticed in us. Uh, so this is an interesting uh, day, actually. I, I didn't. I mean, I, I I didn't think that you know this verse. I will be able. I will be discussing this verse on this particular day. But it's a really appropriate day. Just after this class, we are going to you know travel to um, um, Bahavana Society. We are Bhante Ji, Bhante Gunaratan is residing. So all the monks in this area will gather in that temple. And what we are going to do is, you know, we are doing this Upasata Kama, the monastic uh, uh, Vinaya Kama. In that Vinaya Kama, we do an important activity called Pavarana. We invite other monks. If we have seen or if you have heard of any of my mistakes, or if you have any suspicion of any of my mistake or my misbehavior, please tell me. So even even senior monks are inviting other monks to tell them whatever misbehavior mis, uh, mi, uh, or mis, um, whatever faults that they have noticed during these three months. So it's an open invitation that we are doing to all the other monks uh, to like give me, a, a sh tell me what you have seen or heard or even have a suspicion. Uh, and I will, I will, you know, um, make um, corrections and, and um, uh, amendments. So it's an important, you know, day actually today, this full moon day to discuss this verse. Any sharing or thoughts? If not, uh, let me go to the other part of the program. Uh, okay, I would like to hear, I think it's also a good opportunity for us to think, uh, discuss a little bit about uh, friendships. Um, so usually you know, when we have friends, uh, uh, we, we think, think that our friendship is something um, that friends should you know, always approve us, always praise us, always appreciate us. Actually, uh, we like friends who always approve us, you know, approve our decisions and approve our behavior. You know, um, so we always like to be around those people, you know, always you know, have good things to say about us. Uh, 
but actually Buddha's advice is actually true friends do not always approve us. Um, and so therefore, it's, it's, you have a friend who will not approve your behavior, who will not approve your decisions. Do not unfriend that person. You know, these days we are all living in the social media, you know, platforms. So usually, you know, you will have friends who always approve you, give you likes. But if there's someone who will not approve you, not appreciate you, sometimes criticize you, you, you we tend to unfriend them. Right? Um, but I think importantly, if someone is doing it with, with you know, genuine uh, you know, kindness, uh, we should not unfriend them. Buddha said, true friend will not always approve us. He point out our mistakes and help us grow. That's, that's being a real good friend. So this doesn't mean judgmental, you know, so, uh, but, but it, based on acceptance and the concern for the friend. Uh, so if you want to become a good friend to others, if you really be, if you want to be a true friend to others, think about that. You know, you can appreciate, definitely we can appreciate, you know, goodness in others, but we should also help them to grow a little bit. And, and maybe point out and su give suggestions and help them to recognize their own weaknesses and go, grow beyond them. Uh, you, sh you shouldn't be judgmental. You shouldn't be always like, like you know, harsh, like criticizing them, but actually kindly pointing out them. Uh, and we have a, a master, a Buddhist uh, monk called uh, Venerable Mudita. Uh, he, he, he lives in uh, D Michigan, Detroit, and uh, all the... Um, um, uh, other monks, he's a very senior monk. So all other monks know that he, he's he's the monk who will uh, who is who will always directly tell you what is wrong <laughs> with you. And um, so uh, we say that the getting a blame from him uh, is is like a, uh, because uh, he has he has this important practice that he will only blame blame is admonish the people that he really cares about. He will only blame the people he really loves. So if if we get a blame from him, we know that he really cares for us. And if we don't blame you, that means he's, he, he hasn't really you know, uh, given you any attention or any care. So all the monks would like to get uh, some blame from him, uh, not uh, one way is to like you know, identify our own weaknesses, but also know that he actually cares for us. So, I mean, that is, that you know, if you really, really have a concern and care for others, we should also help them to grow beyond. So, I think we have to have that understanding of the friendship. Um, and so, maybe this is a good uh, time also for us to discuss uh, important teachings we can find uh, in the Singhalova the Sutta, where Buddha talks about friendship. Uh, um, so. Uh, in the Singhalova, the Sutta, and there are you know, two categories of friends, uh, good friends and bad friends. And so four good friends are given there. Uh, one is called helper. That means anukampa, uh, uh, upakaraka, upakaraka, uh, helper. That means, you know, the, the different good friends have these four, four characteristics. You know, some may have dominant nature uh, be being help if always help you always if you need some help some you know um uh, he will he will have time for you so that's helper and if you so you, you can think about you know your good friends always helping you giving you supporting you you know helpful that's helper but there's also another quality or maybe another type of friend uh, uh, is called enduring friend that means he will not uh, leave you whether in the moments of crisis and also in the moment of happiness. And he will be with you whether you are going through happy moments or whether you are going through a crisis. He will not change. Samana, sukha, dukkha, like equal in both good times and bad times. That's another good friend. And, and, and the next one is called uh, mentor. That means, I mean, this is the kind of friend that we are talking about today. You know, mentors always, you know, be with us, you know, but kindly, you know, point out, you know, some mistakes and help us to grow. Uh, and then always give some advice. He may not criticize us, you know, in the, in the middle of everyone, but he will privately tell us, you know, how we can do things better. 
So that there will be a, a kind of the friend like, like that. Sometimes we don't like such friends. The, the, but what we, we want to know in this lesson is actually we should really treasure that kind of friend if that person is telling us with kindness and with some kind of knowledge and understanding. And the fourth one is compassionate friend. Uh, we call Anu Kampaka. Uh, that means, you know, uh, definitely be with us and have deep empathy for us, even though sometimes those friends do not live with us all the time. Although those friends, we may not have opportunity to really practically help us, but they will always have an empathy for us. They will always chant for us. So those are the good, uh, good for friends. I mean, of course, they are not, you, you can have friends can maybe belong to one of these categories. You know, every friend is a helper, every friend is a mentor, compassionate, but some friends may have more dominant qualities, uh, one, dominant one quality than others. So therefore, in the in the single of the sutta, Buddha said that among our friends, we can find these four good friends, recognize them, appreciate them, and be a friend in return to them. You know, and you know, and we can think about ourselves and how I can be a helper to others, how how I can be an enduring friend to others, not leaving them when they are going through difficult times, um, but actually being with them with both good and bad times, and how I can be a mentor to my friends, and I, I can have more empathy towards my friends. But let's go to the bad friends, <laughs> for, for four bad friends. And here Buddha talked about um, interesting uh, uh, names um, given here. It's called Taker, uh, and in Pali we say Anya Dattuhara. That means actually <laughs> some friends always like to take things from us. You know, they will find a way to you know, take things from us. Either they will take, you know, some things, uh, I mean, whatever our belongings, uh, they will say, oh, oh, I really like this, you know, and then you will give it, uh, or maybe you will take your time. And they will, um, and they, they, they don't necessarily give them back. I mean, they will, they will take more than they will give you. So there can be bad friends like that. So just with this show, showing to lay people that we have to be mindful of that takers always try to take things from you, but not really giving uh, many things uh, to take it. And the next one is called talker. Uh, that means, you know, he will, uh, in, in Pali, we call Vachi Parama. He will always help you, but only in his speech. And he will always, you know, um, say, oh, I could have helped you if you told me, but if you tell them when you need help, they will not. They will find all kind of ex excuses not to help you. So they will always, you know, help you only with the speech, you know. Um, and I, they will even make promises. Oh, I will help you, you know, when you need, but when you really need, they may not come. So, but so like using the speech as a way to like, you know, from making promises, always talk, but not really do it uh, in, in helping you. And the third one is called flatterer. Okay, flatterer. This is remember the in the good friends here we have a mentor uh, who will always you know uh, who will you know appreciate us but at the same time point out our mistakes and honestly tell us what is wrong with us. But the flatterer is the opposite of that, uh, and he will always uh, uh, always simply flatter us. You know, always all the good things to say about us. He will never uh, say uh, anything bad about us. Always appreciate us, praise us so much. But of course, uh, uh, in, uh, behind our back, you know, he may you know criticize us or blame us. But in front of us, he will always flatter, always flatter. So there are kind of some friends. You know, sometimes flatterers can have very you know um, good circle of friends because we all all like praise. We all all like appreciation. We all like you know, um, you know, people who say good things about us. Flatterer can have many friends. You you may have a lot of flatterers too, but the, but it's not very helpful because we, I mean, uh, of course, appreciating others' quality is good thing, but um, and, but having a flatterer as a friend is not helping us uh, growing um, going forward. And the, there's another <laughs> friend is called reckless companion. Uh, actually, uh, this is a friend that will always uh, encourage you to do bad things, will accompany you to do all the kind of bad things, 
and the Pali term is called Appaya Sahaya. That means a, a supporter uh, for you to go to hell. <laughs> he will, you know, he will bring you to, you know, uh, places, you know, to do all the bad things. He will encourage you. He will suggest you to, to you know, go, you know, go for, to do bad things. You can have friends who always invite you and encouraging you uh, to do all the uh, misbehavior uh, and to break precepts. If you have a friend, we'll always invite you and invite you to, you know, break precepts <laughs> uh, and then, you know, support you to, to break precepts. He's a reckless companion, a, a friend who, who helps you to go to hell. Uh, so, and you can think about yourself, you know, am I a talker? Am I a taker? Am I a talker? Am I a flatterer? Or am I a reckless companion to others? And be mindful about that and, and try not to be so, uh, but instead, you know, being a, a good friend or uh, uh, like uh, being a helpful and enduring friend or mentor. Okay, so these are the key points I'd like to share with you. Uh, we can go back to the original verse uh, and, and, and now read, you know, with more deeper meaning, like you know, what Buddha is saying here, should one find a person who points us our points out faults and who reproves, one should follow such a wise, sagacious person as one would follow a guide to some hidden treasure. To one who follows such a wise person, it will be an advantage and not a disadvantage. Okay, so, so remember that, and this is showing who is a true Kalyana Mitha. Okay, so based on this verse, you know, maybe, um, um, I can, you know, give you uh, some tasks here. Uh, that you know, uh, if you have a question, please um, put in the chat box. But think about, you know, what do you think about? What would be the characteristic of a good spiritual friend? We call Kalyana Mitha. Think about that. What would be the characteristic of a good Kalyana Mitha? Okay, I think there's one question in the chat box. How do I know how to discern if the admonishment is coming from um, a worthy source? Mm. How do I discern if the admonishment is coming from a worthy source? If, if any admonishment, you know, uh, if it is really helping us to see something that we didn't see earlier, uh, if it is helping us to, you know, recognize some, you know, weak points in us, doesn't matter what source it's coming from, you know, you can take it. I think, um, I think that maybe, you know, that question help you to, you know, maybe we can add, in addition to, you know, a uh, real person, we can also use, um, you know, suttas, you know, we can also use, you know, uh, important books also different as a Kalyanamita. Okay, I'm getting some, you know, uh, uh, characteristics of a Kalyana myth. Thank you. I would like to invite you, you know, if uh, to, to share with us, have you ever had a person in your life that little bit harsh on you, but was really helpful? Of course, I remember my own master <laughs> in my case. You know, when I was a small monk, he's very harsh on me. He's very you know, strict. <laughs> and he will punish you. And if you do uh, mistakes, if you don't study well, if you do any you know, misbehavior, he was very harsh on me. Uh, at, at, at my, even when, when I was a small monk, when I was slowly growing up, he changed. Um, so, but I would like to, you know, to, to remember. And if you think that, you know, that, person could be your parent, could be a teacher, could be a grandparent, or could be, you know, someone else that little bit harsh on you, but but later you realize that, you know, that was really helpful. Maybe as a tribute, this is a good time for you to share with us. Anyone?
Okay, there's a, there's a question here. When we are sincere in correcting a friend, how do we convince the friend that we are really sincere in helping that friend? Okay. Uh, how we can convince the friend that we are really sincere in uh, that we have a deep concern. Uh, we have deep uh, concern for the person. Okay. Uh, you know, we should not uh, we should not expect that you know our friend will uh, straight away recognize that we have a deep you know concern for the friend, and you should be ready for that. You know, our friends will take time to recognize that actually we are genuinely uh, uh, telling those things. We have a, a deep concern for them. It will take some time for them to understand. The only way is to actually you know uh, be consistent. You know, be if you consistent consistent in your helping or guiding or you know, instruction and you know and they will you know take time to like look into that you know one other way to you know to convince them you really care for them and love for them so and you uh, you, you do other help to them also you're not only always like pointing out their mistakes you are also helping them in other ways like showing your concern from other ways when you come to that weakness, that when you come to that misbehavior or mis, uh, like bad habit, you are very strict. You want them to change. But in, in other times, in other occasions, you help that person. So you show your kindness from other ways. But when it comes to that bad habit or uh, weakness, you always give the instruction. So then the, the friend will, will um, understand that you, know, you are really compassionate for that person. Okay, Sharon is sharing her mom about her mom. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, thank you, brother Billy Tang. You have a nice definition uh, of friends. F stands for fellowship, R stands for reassurances, I stands for inspiration, E stands for empathy, N stands for non judgment, D stands for development or mentorship, and S stands for sharing. Okay. That's a nice way of putting that. You know, I think it include um, when you go to Buddha's advice on good friends and bad friends, I think all these things are covered. Thank you, Brother Billy. Okay, any other last questions or comments? Okay, so... So be ready, be ready to get you know, criticism. That's not a bad thing. Maybe whenever you get a criticism, if someone is pointing out you know, their, our mistakes, uh, we, may, we may feel some discomfort. Notice that. Next time if someone is criticizing, giving bad feedback, or you know, um, you know, some kind of pointing out our, our weaknesses, there'll be some kind of you know, discomfort occurring in our heart. Observe that, that's very good. Very good that, you know, to, to observe that discomfort, little bit uneasiness that is arising in us. So recognize it. Remember that that is coming from our pride or mana and our uh, stubbornness or like, you know, that, that's, that's uh, like coming from the ego. So notice that, recognize it. And it's not bad, but just recognize it and develop the, you know, uh, mindfulness and understanding that, yes, that is that, that unwillingness to hear this is coming from this, my ego, that is preventing us for me to grow. Okay, that's okay. You feel it, you go through that uneasiness and, and discomfort, but you take the point seriously. Uh, and sometimes some people are not very skillful in pointing, our mis pointing out our mistakes. They'll be very, very harsh, but even that's okay. You don't, don't worry about the tone and think about, is there anything that I can learn? Even from a person who's not friendly with us, is there anything that I can learn? And, 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 and use them as treasures, uh, treasures, you know, you can actually uh, and, and grow. So like in Venerable Radha, <laughs> uh, who will always, you know, uh, was, um, I mean, in his case, he, he needed a special, you know, training, um, but I think, noticing or uh, detecting our own uneasiness and not to you know uh, become victims to them and then i'm uh, paying our attention to is there anything that i can learn and grow that will help us a lot so be ready for to find out 
hidden treasures. Actually, hidden weakness. When you find a hidden weakness, you can work uh, with uh, work to overcome that. And what is what you discover after that is a very beautiful uh, treasure that is our our whole kusala, you know, our whole uh, kusala qualities. When you remove your, remove your defilements, what is left there is is kusala qualities, wholesome qualities. Is like you know sat bojanga, you know, like seven factors of enlightenment and all other wholesome qualities. Those qualities are kind of hidden and covered. So we need to remove all our defilements to take that beauty out. So let's use all the criticism, all the admonishments, all the instructions to like recognize our weaknesses and go about them and bring out our goodness. Okay. Uh, I think that's the you know uh, that's what I have I have to uh, I have to share with you today, and I look forward to you know uh, meet you again uh, next Thursday. We will oh. go through another verse and hopefully we remember some Pali. Do you remember the meaning of Medhavi? Uh, you know someone to have a good name, a sagacious person. Of course you know the Pandita, right? And then Vajja, Vajja is the meaning uh, term for. Uh, uh, fault uh, in Pali. Okay, so with that, let's uh, conclude now. Uh, sister, do you have anything to share, share with our crowd? Dante, on behalf of everyone here, I would like to extend our deepest gratitude to you for taking the time to share Buddha wisdom with us today. Your teaching has provided us with invaluable insight and we are truly grateful to you. We look forward to meet you next Thursday. May you continue to share the Dharma and touch many more lives with your teaching. May you be well and happy. Thank you once again, Bante. You're most welcome, sister. Let us, you know, I look forward to see you again, have another discussion, but I would like you to share more thoughts next time. Okay, be ready to like share your thoughts and ask questions. So let us share the merits with everyone. May all our departed ancestors, relatives, and all other divine beings and all other sentient beings share our merits. May they too have a good kalyanamitas in their life. May everyone progress towards the enlightenment. Idang mi nyati nang ho tu sukita hun tu nyata yo. Idang mi nyati nang ho tu sukita hun tu nyata yo. Idang mi nyati nang ho tu sukita hun tu nyata yo. Etnta vata cha amhi hi sambhatang punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabb sampati siddhya etnta vata cha amhi hi sambhatang punya sampadam sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabb sampati siddhya Ettavata cha amhi hi sambhatang punya sampadang sabbe satha anumodantu sabbe sampati siddhya.